Good evening. <clears throat> Announcements, announcement for June 19, 2017 public hearing. I'd like to welcome you to this public hearing of the New York City Rent Guidelines Board. This is the fifth of the five public hearings to consider comments concerning proposed rent adjustments for renewal leases for apartments, lofts, hotels, and other housing units subject to the Rent Stabilization Law of 1969 and Emergency Tenant Protection Act of 1974. These adjustments will affect renewal leases commencing between October 1st, 2017 through September 30, 2018. I will now take roll call. Please re respond if present. Hillary Potain. Present. Harvey Epstein. Present. Shayla Garcia. Present. Cecilia Jose, me present. David Rees. Helen Schwab. Mary Serafi. Present. Scott Walsh. Present. And Kathleen Roberts. Let the record show that we have a quorum. Um, there is um, the other two, uh, Helen and Kathleen are on their way. So she suggests that we get started. They should be here momentarily. Um, can you hear me? Is the mic on? Okay. Uh, so there's a few more uh, announcements that we're going to read off. Uh, the next meeting of the board will be the final vote, which will take place on June 27th, starting at 7 p.m. It will be held at Baruch College, Mason Hall, 17 Lexington Avenue, corner of 23rd Street in Manhattan. Directions to this meeting can be found on our website, nycrgb.org, in the About Us section in the meeting schedule. And as always, there are copies of our meeting schedule here today. If you are interested in receiving emails regarding future Rent Guidelines Board public meetings and hearings, please see the RGB staff at the registration de desk. Um, before we begin our hearing, uh, I would like to read in some of the rules and parameters for those who are testifying before the board. Each speaker will have two minutes to give his or her testimony. In the event that a large numbers of people wish to speak, the chair re reserves the right to reduce the allotted speaking time. The clock will beep once when the speaker has 30 seconds left. And uh, the, you can see the clock over here to my left. I will, uh, the chair will attempt to alternate, alternate between speakers, between tenants and owners, but this may not always be possible. Speakers must confirm their presence with the RGB staff at the registration desk um, located near the entrance of the hall. Speakers will not be called if they have not checked in at the registration table. There is a Spanish, uh, Spanish interpreter here today. When registering to speak, please notify the staff if you would like an interpreter. I will try to call several names in advance. If your name is called, it is advisable that you move to the front of the auditorium. If you have materials to distribute at the board, you should give them to the RGB staff sitting at the signing table near the entrance. And finally, we ask that you please try to stay within your allotted time so we can get through as many speakers as possible. Uh, we're going to do these same announcements uh, by our Spanish interpreter. Estos anuncios eh, son para el día 19 de junio para esta audiencia pública. Me gustaría darle la bienvenida al público a esta audiencia pública de la Junta de Regulación para el Alquiler de la Ciudad de Nueva York. Esta es la quinta junta de las, eh, la quinta reunión de las eh, audiencias públicas para considerar comentarios sobre los ajustes del alquiler para, eh, algún, para algunos, algunos contratos que se van a renovar para apartamentos, eh, lofts, hoteles y viviendas con unidades que les 
impacta la ley eh, de, para la estabilización del alquiler de 1969 eh, y el, a la acta del 1974 para la emergencia de inquilinos. Estos ajustes impactarán la renovación de contratos que empezarán del 1 de octubre de 2017 hasta el 30 de septiembre del 2018. Ahora tomaré la existencia um, y los nombres de las personas son Hillary Botin, Harvey Epstein, Sheila García, Cecilia Gosa, uh, David Reese, Helen Schwab, Mary Serafi, Scott Walsh, Kathleen Roberts y Helen y Kathleen están en camino, uh, pero empezaremos la reunión ahora. Um, eh, entonces, eh, que se enseñe de que tenemos quórum para esta reunión. La próxima reunión de la Junta va a ser para el voto final, que tomará a cabo, que se llevará a cabo el 27 de junio, empezando a las 7 de la noche, y será en la Universidad de Baruch, en la habitación Mason Hall, en la en la 17 eh, de la Lexington Avenida, en la esquina de la calle 23 en Manhattan. Las, eh, la dirección se puede encontrar en el sitio de red en la nycrgb.org en la sección eh, sobre eh, la junta y también se puede encontrar ahí el calendario de las, de las reuniones. Y como siempre, eh, habrán co hay copias de la programación eh, en el registro hoy. Si les interesa recibir más correos electrónicos de parte de la Junta eh, y, y las audiencias, por favor comuníquese con el personal que está en la mesa de registro. Antes de empezar la audiencia, me gustaría, me gustaría leer algunas reglas y parámetros para las personas que van a testificar hoy ante la Junta. Cada persona que va a testificar va a tener dos minutos para dar su testimonio. Eh, el hecho de que hayan muchas personas que quieran testificar, eh, la presidenta reserva el derecho a reducir el tiempo eh, que las personas van a hablar. Eh, tenemos el reloj que está aquí por, eh, por de lado. Eh, y va a sonar una vez cuando la persona tiene 30 segundos eh, para su eh, testimonio. Intentaré alternar eh, las personas que dan su testimonio entre inquilinos y dueños, pero eso no siempre va a ser posible. Eh, los las personas que van a dar testimonio eh, necesitan avisarle sobre su presencia al personal que está a al, al, la entrada en, en la mesa de registración que está localizada al frente. Las personas no se les va a llamar al menos de que estén en esta lista y que se han registrado en la mesa de la entrada. Eh, habrá eh, interpretación en español. Eh, cuando se están registrando, por favor notifíquele al personal de que necesita un intérprete. E intentaré llamar los, unos cuantos nombres por avanzado. Y si le llamo, leamos su nombre, eh, les aconsejamos de que vengan al frente del cuarto del auditorio. Eh, si tienen mat eh, materiales que distribuirle a la Junta, debería dárselo al personal eh, de la Junta que está en la mesa de la entrada. Y les pedimos que por favor se queden, eh, con eh, eh, que usen el tiempo que se les da eh, para hacer su testimonio porque eh, queremos que, eh, que todos pues, tengan la posibilidad de dar su testimonio. Okay, uh, so our first three speakers of the evening shall be Adam Sabella, Howard James Ruop, and Gladys Pugla. And if I mispronounce your name, I apologize <laughs> up front, I'm sorry. So if we could have Adam Sabella please come up. Thank you for the time. Um, I was number nine on the list, so I don't know how I ended up first, but uh, that's fine. Um, okay. My total expenses increased 10% year over year, led by real estate taxes, which increased 15%, and energy costs, which are up over 20%. With a capped revenue stream, our net income is down, continuing the policy of freezing rents does several things. One, net income goes down every year. Two, Declining income deprives properties of cash flow that is required to maintain a building. We are literally watching the slow motion decay of the city's housing stock. 
Number three, and this is very important, private capital is leaving the rent regulated sector in droves right now. Um, approximately 50% fewer buildings sold this year compared to last year. The bottom line is people do not want to invest in buildings where cash flow is declining every year. Those are the facts, and I don't see any other way of interpreting the data other than by allowing a rent increase that corresponds with expense growth. Please don't boo. Now let's talk about the bigger picture. Population growth has exploded in New York as people from around the world have come here to start a career. As a result, there are more renters than there are apartments. This increased demand for apartments has resulted in an increase in rents, making affordability a real issue for thousands of New Yorkers. That's the truth. But here's another truth. Freezing rents does literally nothing to solve the pressures, to alleviate the pressures that create the affordability issue. Only and, un and until we build more apartments than there are renters will we see rent levels become affordable. This is simple supply and demand economics. And guess what? It works. Market rents have come down 15% at our Brooklyn property because private developers built thousands of apartments in this submarket, which exceeded renter demand. So my suggestion to the mayor is be a leader. Stop thinking in four-year election cycles with short-term political solutions like a rent freeze. Instead, spend more time with zoning boards, community boards, and private developers so we can figure out how to bring more supply to the market as soon as possible. We need long-term sustainable solutions, not band-aid political ones. And lastly, to the Grant Guidelines Board, you're supposed to be a credible, independent body. And the question that I would like answered, and I think a lot of other people as well is, is the mayor directing you on what increases or what freezes to issue? And I, is, will that ever be investigated? And I'd love to hear the answer to that. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Are there any questions? Excuse me. I think we have a question, if you would mind stepping back to the microphone. So just <coughs> to answer your question, <coughs> the mayor's not directing me or our, our representative, so I have no idea where you get those claims from. But um, uh, you, you said that, which is confusing to me, but you know sales prices are up for buildings in the city, right? They're, they're, they're not up this year. They've been they are up this year. If you look at a report, which are on our website, you can see that sales prices are up, right? No, but go oh, ahead. Okay, then you, you can look. Okay. I, I, how many units do you own? 162. You own 162. <laughs> and out of those 162, how many are rent stabilized? Over two-thirds. So about 100 are stabilized? Correct. And how many are rent controlled? Just a handful. A handful. And so and the rest are just market rents? Correct. And you're saying your fuel went up in the last ten percent in the last few years? It went up about twenty percent. Twenty percent. And that's from fuel prices that were double three, four years ago. Fuel prices of one eighty a gallon now was you know, almost double that three, four years ago. Energy declined significantly three years ago. We were penalized for that. And over the last year, energy has increased. So from, it's lower than it was three years ago, but you're saying it's higher than it was last year. It's higher than it was last year, yes. Right. Correct. Yeah. But overall, we've seen a decline in energy. And you're saying your net operating income hasn't gone up, as our reports say? My income is is down 5 to 10% per property this year. And it's, my taxes have just gone up incredibly. So your expenses exceed your income? No. I no. Said, no. No, no, no. So you're, no. you're making more than you're spending on your buildings. Correct, but our net income is down year over year. Correct. Well, so when tenants' incomes don't exceed their expenses, like their rents are 80% or 90% of their expenses, and you ask for a rent increase for them, and they can't afford it, and we get 25,000 homeless people, that's the answer that we have to the problem. No, I... I that, that's not what I'm suggesting, and I don't think you're listening. W what, what I was saying is there is a very real affordable issue in this city, but freezing rents is not the solution. Until we have more units than we have renters, uh, we're going to have problems. So you, you could freeze our rents this year, but it's not going to alleviate the problem. So, And it's also not my job as a private uh, owner 
to subsidize somebody else's living costs. And if I had known that before, before we got into the business, I wouldn't have gotten into the business. And capital is leaving the business now because it's highly regulated and cash flow is not going up, it's going down. And people are in business for cash flow. Yeah, I think we have a factual dispute here about cash flow leaving and prices, and maybe we can't resolve that today. Um, but when you bought your buildings, you knew they were rent-stabilized units in them? We knew they were rent-stabilized, okay. and we knew that on a 40- or 50-year history that we can count on 2 3 4% increases. Right. And obviously, we're in a new paradigm. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Uh, the next uh, three speakers are Howard James Ruop, Gladys P Pugla, and Maria Ortez, or Gortez, I'm Ortez. sorry. Cortez, sorry. I am very pleased to, to address the New York City Rent Guidelines Board this evening and to heartily thank this board for considering us the rent stabilized tenants by giving us a rent freeze two years in a row. Almost everybody in this assembly hall recognizes that in this climate of record homelessness, landlords are doing fine with net operating income growing by 10.8% 2014-2015 year, making it the 11th year in a row that net operating income has increased. According to tenant representative Harvey Epstein, 43% of those forced to enter homeless shelters did so because they lost their rent-stabilized housing. Much of this crisis in housing is caused by those disgusting parasites known as major capital improvements, or MCIs. Once these sinister MCI increases are added to the monthly rent bill, they stay there per omnia secula seculorum. What makes matters even more revolting is that these major capital improvements, which are really nothing more than major cost increases to tenants, are then added to the monthly rent and then included in the amount used to determine future increases in the rent. Representatives Kavanaugh, Hoyleman, Kruger, et al are in favor of knocking the MCIs off once the rent so-called improvement has been paid off in the building. Okay. And finally, dear friends... Can I ask you, just, can you just wait a minute? I think there's some people coming in. I don't want to take away your time in hearing you. Can we let people come in and then you'll continue? Thank you for being patient. Thank you all for being patient. What makes matters even more revolting is that these major capital improvements, which are really nothing more than major cost increases to tenants, are then added to the monthly rent and then included in the amount used to determine future increases in the rent. Representatives Kavanaugh, Hoyleman, Kruger et al. are in favor of knocking the MCIs off the rent once the so-called improvement has been paid off in a building. And finally, dear friends, let us never forget the children. According to the National Center for Children in Poverty at my own alma mater, Columbia, close to one million children in this great empire state of New York are living in poverty. But let us take this further. According to data from the Citizens Committee for the Children of New York, more than half a million New York City children live below the poverty line. 
Rent increases can push these children off their axis and inexorably into a hell of homelessness, which will then cause children out of school or out of work, starvation, increased hospitalizations, increased disease, and increased crime. Excuse me, and your two minutes are up. Could you wind up your presentation, this please? Word for all that you have done. No. Now all my fellow tenants and I look to you to roll back the rent! Roll back the rent! Roll back the rent! Gladys Puya? Is this on? Okay. Gladys Puya? Good evening, welcome. Thank you. Good evening, and thank you for being put me here to tell you my my story. Uh, and my name is Gladys Puglia. I'm a member of Mecklenburg, New York. I live in Westwick almost going to 20 years, and I'm just gonna tell I'm desperate because I'm gonna be one of those homeless people that you see in the street. I have an old lady living with me because they threw her out of the apartment. And we soon going to be the same way as she was thrown out. The rent is too high. The gentrification has hurt a lot. Especially my community, Bushwick community is being hurt. People being displaced, people being buy out, and just people thrown, being thrown in the street with kids, with their dogs, and it's horrendous what's going on. I'm here to tell you, please, just think about the people that we have our homes right now, our apartments right now. We don't want to lose it. I don't think nobody wants to lose their apartment now. And we're fighting. We, want, we come every year here to tell you, please, just Hold a little bit that rent that we have right now. Keep us holding that, because that's the only thing. You say that landlords not getting no money now because of the freezing, the one year lease. My landlord had bought three buildings after that, and he keep buying it. This one year lease, it doesn't hurt him. And I don't think the, the other landlords done it too. So why? Are you keep giving more money to these rich people and taking our homes? Just give us a chance. Give another chance to keep holding our apartment this year and make this affordable. I don't know with whom I have to go. I'm gonna be going and tell them, change these rules, change these um, laws that they have for these people. For these landlords, not for the tenant. I thought this year is supposed to protect the tenants, not the rich people. That's what we are doing. That's what you are doing. Anyway, thank you. And I hope you consider this and give us what is it that we want? What do we want? When do we want it? Thank you. Thank you. Maria Cortez. Hi. Uh, good evening. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Maria Cortez. And uh, I am a member of My The Road, New York. And, uh, and I am a tenant on 870 Bedford Avenue in Brooklyn. And at least I am a member for 28 years of 1199 Union. So, and I pay more than 30% of, of my income in rent where I'm living now. Um, the thing that happened in my building is in 2004 with a uh, new uh, landlord, uh, 
I live in that building since 1992. And the building for I a lot of effort for because he don't fix. He don't fix. I have to come many times to over here at 141 Livingston with my landlord because he denied. And I pay my rent always. Okay? So far, I find out they are selling the building, the apartment unit selling the uh, apartment. So um, my determination is that what's going on with us? That's a question. We are poor people. We don't have a high income, okay? And we are paying more in rent than the income that we have, okay? So have in consideration that New York is for everybody. It's not only for the rich people, okay? They are offering, offer, doing offer, buy out. We are no in sale. Ten and no, we are not on sale, okay? Uh, for the goodness of the tenant, uh, I ask this, bo uh, this board to freeze or take in consideration the amount of rent because they are getting a lot of, they are getting a lot of money. They say no, but they are making a lot of money. And they have getting a lot, a lot of money because right now, I know three thousand dollars for one apartment. There's a lot of money, okay? Um, it has the building that is in a stabilized rent that they are doing, try to buy other people to take it out all those those apartments from the stabilized rent and increase the uh, the, the price in the apartment. So far, we are losing a lot of the stabilized rent apartment. So we are recovering. Excuse me, you your, your time is up. Could you wind up your presentation, please? Excuse me? Your time is up. Could you wind up your okay, presentation? So the only thing is that I tell you, please, we don't want to lose our apartment. Take that in consideration. Can, can, okay, I, thank you. can I ask you a quick well, question? A question. Can I ask you a quick question? What, what what did an uh, increase mean to you, your family, your neighbors? What would, if we had two and four percent increase this year, what would that mean to people you know in your community? It's a lot of people that they are increased. Uh, okay, uh, almost. Uh, we think uh, keep the rent like in the way that it is. Okay, or it's not because they did not give the lease either. A lot of us live without lease because they want to increase it, they disagree. And they give it a lease with preference rents either. Mm. And a lot of people, they don't know what is preference rent. Right. Okay? That's the problem. Zero. What we want? Zero. What we want? Zero. When we want? Zero. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next three speakers will be Jose Rodriguez, Rosalie Grossman and Betty Key. Jose Rodriguez? Just a minute, let's see if Jose Rodriguez is here. Is Jose Rodriguez here? Okay. Rosalie Grossman? Not here. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, you can do it that way too. Okay, hello. That's good. I'm sorry. No problem. I'm a member of Met Council on Housing and a retired social worker. My income is mainly from two small labor union pensions plus Social Security. I've lived. Can you just. Can you hear me if I raise my voice? Okay. That's because I'm from Brooklyn. Uh, I'm a member of Met Council on Housing and a retired social worker. My income is mainly from two small labor, labor union pensions plus Social Security. I've lived in my apartment since 1974. During these years, I've received rent increases as high as 10%. In addition, in 2010, the RGB decided that the 6% that they had decided on for that year was not high enough a not high enough increase for tenants like me living in our apartments for more than six years. 
So they decided to charge us a higher amount called a minimum base. Okay. A minimum base increase. That's good to repeat because it's so bad. For people living in their apartments more than six years. The tenants called it a poor tax. In 2015, I did not receive the much lauded much rent freeze on the one-year lease as I chose a two-year lease at 2% for fear of getting an even high, higher increase last year. However, these percentage increases were not the only factor causing my rent to rise. In 1987, my landlord decided to replace all windows in the building as an MCI, which has so far cost me $3,880. Then the boiler was replaced in 2004, costing me, so far, $2,843. My rent was increased permanently for each MCI, compounded by the percentage increases with each lease renewal since. Clearly, landlords are benefiting unreasonably by charging tenants the cost of MCIs and IAIs forever instead of paying for the actual cost. I know that the RGB does not control MCIs, IAIs, vacancy bonuses, and preferential rents, but please consider that the increases that each of you is responsible for with your vote will escalate with each new lease. It's important that you consider that the rent rollback that we are requesting will help to compensate renters like me for the excessive increases that we've suffered at the hands of greedy landlords and the political partners in City Hall in Albany for many years. <laughs> According to the recent RGB report, landlord profits have increased by 10.8%, while homelessness has increased due to evictions of tenants who are unable to pay their rents. Small, lo small landlords who earn less than 5% can open their books for a hardship increase. Therefore, I ask you for the rollback of tenants that is long, rents that is long overdue, or at least a rent freeze on both one and two year leases so that the low income, working, and middle class people who keep the city running can continue to live in it. Thank you. Thank you. Betty Key. Hello, good evening. Greetings to the board. Good evening. Uh, my name is Betty Key. I am uh, organizer of one of my buildings. I live in Crown Heights. I am um, oh, a little nervous right now. <laughs> Can you lift the microphone just a little bit closer lift to it? you? Okay. Can you hear me now? Much better. Thank you. All right. I'm here to speak about Scree. Um, I've seen a lot of different changes in my, my neighborhood. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned I live in Crown Heights. And my building is a rent control, rent stabilization, at least it used to be. Uh, it's changing daily. And what I see now is a lot of apartments that's available now, the average person couldn't rent. They cannot afford $2,000, $3,000, and that's what the apartments are going for now. I'm here to speak about Scree. I am a senior citizen, and as I look around, uh, I see a lot of senior citizens here. And I hear that uh, Scree and other organizations, DRE, and the rest of the, rest of the uh, uh, programs that you have helping us will be eliminated. Because if the rent continues to go up, we're going to phase right out of it. I'm a senior citizen that's taking care of two young children. I wanted them to come up with maybe they're too shy. One is seven and one is nine. Now, if you keep increasing this rent, how am I going to make it with a fixed income? Because I am on Social Security. How are my children going to make it? Because if I can't, don't have any place to live, they don't have a place to live. And I'm sure there's many other grandparents here that's trying to hold on to their families. And basically, yes, that's what I'm trying to do. Hold on to our little ones, because that's our future. But if we're homeless, like the rest of these people, you have no place to put them. In the building next to mine, it's 80% programs. This landlord is getting $7,000 for one th three-bedroom apartment. It's a sin. 
And in the in that building and in my neighborhood, what I'm seeing is homelessness, which I don't have a problem with. I'm seeing uh, mentally ill every day, talking to cars, mentally ill patients. I'm seeing age patients. I mean, they're not going to tell you they have AIDS, but we know there is a problem. So now I know that the landlords is giving, getting a hundred and two hundred percent increase in housing these people. But what about us? What about us? He can't say that there's a problem about how he, he cannot maintain his buildings. But what about us? The one that's been there for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. Excuse me, your time is up. Could you wind up your presentation, please? Yes, and I, I do hope that your board consider us uh, and not give this increase. I think that the landlord have more than, this, than anything, and we need help. We need the help. SCREE and the other program is an asset to um, our living daily lives and please consider my request thank you thank you <laughs> carlos manchaca buenas noches to the board uh i want to just say a few words to all of you tonight and really to kind of amplify the work that so many of our organizers across Brooklyn have done. You know, I represent uh, an incredible district, a vibrant district, a low, uh, low income and working families district in Sunset Park and Red Hook. Uh, these families, <laughs> shout out to Red Hook and Sunset Park. I want to say that these neighbors who have, ha have been organizing these last few years have been thankful to this board for the zero increase. Now is the time to maintain that commitment to our working families, our families who are on fixed income, the seniors that you're, you've heard from, our, our immigrant community members as well, that continue to show and tell us the stories of landlords who continue to take advantage of our tenants by deferring the maintenance in these, in these, in these homes. You're going to hear from landlords today that, that they're going to be crying poverty at this point. But we have yet to see actual responses from landlords to make sure that they live in high quality housing. And now is not the time now is the time to roll back, and now is the time to not increase, and you're hearing more and more that the homeless issue is becoming more and more a problem. And we are trying to solve that on the city level, but we need you all to maintain and, and take this decision very, very seriously, that we need to make sure to bring justice to all these families, because denying them their ability to stay in these neighborhoods are going to even further gentrify these neighborhoods, and that is not what we need right now. We need to stand strong in front of all these families and say yes to roll back, yes, to, or, or to a rent, uh, rent freeze. And, and the last thing I want to say is that so many of the, so much of the courage that you're going to hear today coming from seniors and our young people, uh, like Samantha Bravo, who's going to come up and has been in front of you before. But this decision is is something that you can make. There's so many decisions outside of this room that are not in our power to make. You have that power to make that. And so, as a council member representing Sunset Park and Red Hook, I implore you to either do rollback or zero percent increase. Thank you so much. Thank you. What do we want? What do we want? And when do we want it? What do we want? And when do we want that? Thank you. Councilman Menchaga. I think we have a question, Councilman. So I, I want you to tell us about your district, about what, what the rent stabilized housing stock looks like, what you've seen in the last five years around, and what, what do you think? us providing increases versus rollback and freeze as you propose, how that would impact your community. So I think I think you see multiple responses right now from so many of the landlords. The landlords are looking for that moment to be able to leave rent stabilized. Um, and right now, I think you're seeing in Sunset Park, and you have you have different uh, situations that are happening. For example, I just approved an extension of so many of the Section 8 programs. Um, but Sunset Park right now is at that brink. You've seen some other neighborhoods like Williamsburg and Bushwick already kind of leave that. This 
decision today will help us save Sunset Park. Um, and we are working neighbor with neighbors, helping neighbors and Fifth Avenue Committee to really enjoy enjoy the power of community to really work landlord by landlord to make sure that we can preserve that affordable housing. But this increase, this increase will really allow um, for so much of that turnover to really expedite the gentrification. And I think that's what everyone is worried about here. Uh, that's Sunset Park. I think that's so many other neighborhoods. But that that's an accelerator for us in, in Sunset Park. What we need is a rent freeze. We need to keep this, the, the fixed income uh, families, which are so, a profile of so many of our of our, of our neighbors, uh, in, in the housing while we can work on other things to alleviate some of those pressures, like jobs in Sunset Park on the working waterfront. We're going to need more time. And you need to give that to us. Any other questions? I don't okay, think so. Thank you. Thank you. The next three speakers are Samantha Bravo, Margarita Luna, and Fabian Bravo. I think she's coming. Is this? Yes. Oh. Do you need an interpreter? Are you Samantha Bravo? Margarita Luna. Margarita Luna. Well, what is your name? Margarita Luna. All right. We'll take you and then Samantha. Go ahead. Sí. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Margarita Luna y soy parte del grupo Vecinos Ayudando a Vecinos. Vivo en el área de Sunset Park, Brooklyn. Vivo por 14 años en la siguiente dirección, en el 275 de la, 40, de la calle. Durante estos años he tenido que estar pidiendo al casero por reparaciones que tardan en arreglar. Y por let's, let's get razón, the Let me interrupt you and get the interpretation, please. Oh, oh all right, fine. <laughs> Y por esta razón, tengo que ir a corte para que el dueño arregle. Además de eso, en el edificio no hay súper y los pasillos siempre están sucios. Cuando viene un inspector al edificio, el dueño limpia y se pone a recoger toda la basura. Um, good afternoon, my name is Margarita Luna and I um, am part of Neighbors Helping Neighbors. I live in the area of Sunset Park, Brooklyn, and I've lived there for 14 years and I live on 275 46th Street. During, um, during these years, I've had to ask my landlord for repairs and he takes a really long time to make, to repair, to make these repairs. And for this reason, I have to go to court uh, to make sure that he fixes them. As and also, there we don't have a super in our building and all of our, ha our hallways are really dirty. When the inspector comes to look at the um, building, they clean it and they, and they make sure that there's no trash around. Aparte de esto, por muchos años, han cobrado por calefacción y agua caliente ilegalmente porque no pidieron permiso al estado ni a la ciudad para poner candera, cal, calderas individuales por apartamentos. El estado le ordenó al dueño no cobrar más y poner una candela central. Todavía no han hecho, todavía no, no lo han hecho. Ahora mis vecinos y yo vamos a llevar el caso a la Corte Suprema. And also, 
uh, for many years, they've been charging us for heating and hot water illegally uh, because they didn't ask for the appropriate permits from the city uh, to make sure to um, have boilers uh, and so or separate boilers for our apartments. Uh, the state uh, asked uh, the landlord to charge more if uh, they were going to add a central a boiler, and he hasn't done it yet. Now my neighbors and I are going to court, uh, to the Supreme Court, and take our case. Por, por estas razones y, y porque la economía está un poco mal, muy mala, es pedimos la junta que nos hagan que no hagan aumentos, pues los dueños no lo merecen y nuestras familias sufren, sobre todo nuestros niños. Les agradezco por escucharme y tomar en consideración mi testimonio. Gracias. And for these reasons, and also because of the economy, that is, that is pretty bad. We're asking the board uh, to not uh, do any rent increases because the owners don't deserve it and our families are suffering, above all our children. And I'm really grateful for uh, the moment that you gave me to listen to my testimony and for considering my testimony. Thank you. Thank you. Samantha Bravo. Good evening. My name is Samantha Bravo. I live in 43061st Street. I am from the group Neighbors Helping Neighbors. Imagine a long line of families waiting to enter the shelter because they cannot afford their monthly rent or families that work long hours just so they can pay their rent. My mother is the only one working in my family because my father can't work. My older brother, who's 18, goes to college, and my mother struggled to help him pay. My younger brother, who is six, only sees my mom in the mornings and at night because my mom works long hours to pay the rent. Our landlord claims that she made all the repairs, but she only did certain repairs, which were only in the kitchen in my older brother's bedroom. She needed to fix the mold and fix the window from the bathroom and fix the intercom. She did not repair those. Many people agree with the rent increase, but here is my answer. I disagree. I will not continue to let myself and my family be treated horribly and see other families be treated the same. The only benefits, this only benefits landlords, and many of them will continue to harass us and treat us in an inhumane way. If it is decided to increase the rent, do not be surprised about the increase of homeless people and do not be surprised about the increase of empty apartments. As Eleanor Roosevelt said, the destiny of human rights is in the hands of all citizens in all our communities. We, as tenants and citizens of New York, must defend our rights and think about the future generation. Think about the kids. Thank you for listening. Thank you. You have a question? Yeah. So first, I, I just want to say thank you again. I mean, I, to the bottom of my heart, I am inspired by you, and I really think New York is lucky to have you. Thank you. But Samantha, tell everyone how old you are. Twelve. Twelve. And this is not your first time testifying. No. Second. No. So. Why do you do this as, as a preteen in New York? Why does this matter to you? And what does it say to the future of New York to have someone like you come before us? Because we kids are future generation, and because I didn't like the way that Delanda treated my family, and I saw how she treated my parents, so I got mad. So I wanted to defend themselves. Them. It's, Samantha, thank you for everything you do. Thank you. Thank you. Fabian Bravo.
Good evening. Muy buenas, muy buenas tardes a todos y a la Junta de Venta. Mi nombre es Fabián, vivo en el 430, calle 61, apart apartamento 12, en Brooklyn, que Nueva York. En mayo del 2017, el DHCR ordenó a las dueñas del edificio que nos devuelva dinero que por años nos había aumentado de manera ilícita. Estos sobrecargos eran por reparaciones que no había hecho en el departamento y por contratos de renta de los últimos años. Um, good afternoon, everyone from the board. My name is Fabian, and I live at 430 61st Street in apartment 12 in Brooklyn. And on May 2017, DHCR ordered the, our landlord from our building to return money Uh, because they had been uh, charging us illegally um, a lot more for our rent. Um, they said that they were doing this because of repairs that they never did in our apartment. That they never did in our apartment, they did this for years. De la misma manera, en el año 2016, un juez ordenó a la dueña del edificio que no podía sacarnos del departamento, ya que nosotros cumplimos con el pago de renta. Pero irónicamente, este mes, este mes de junio de 2017, termina nuestro contrato de renta y aún no hemos recibido un nuevo contrato adecuado por parte de la dueña de, del edificio. Un abuso de poder de la dueña del edificio que ha estado haciendo durante años en el edificio y con ayuda de los aumentos de renta en los últimos años. In 2006, a judge ordered our landlord of our building um, and said that sh uh, they couldn't kick us out of our apartment because we paid our rent. But um, ironically, uh, this month, in, um, this July of this year, our, co our, our contract is up and we haven't received a new, a new lease, uh, an, a new and adequate lease from our landlord. And this is an abuse of power by the landlord of our building who has been doing this for many years and, the, and she's been able to do this because of these rent increases. De acuerdo a la historia de aumento de los últimos años, en el año 2010 hubo un aumento de un año de 2.5%, de dos años de 4.5%, en el 2011 un año 3.575%, Dos años, 7.25%. En el año 2012, un año, 2%. Dos años, 4%. 2013, un año, 4%. Dos años, 7.75%. 2014, un año, 1%. Dos años, 2.75%. 2015, en un año, 0%. Dos años, 2%. 2016, un, de un año, 0%. Y de dos años, 2.0%. The Rent Guidelines Board has had increases, and historically, uh, these increases have gone up uh, in different years. In 2010, it was one, uh, for a one-year lease, it was 2.5%. For two-year leases, it was 4.5%. In 2011, for a one-year lease, it was 3.75%. In, in a two-year lease, it was 2.7.25%. In 2012, For a one-year lease, it was 2%, and for a two-year lease, it was 4%. In 2013, for a one-year lease, it was 4%. For a two-year lease, it was 7.75%. In 2014, for a one-year lease, it was 1%, and for a two-year lease, it was 2.75%. In 2015, for a one-year lease, it was 0%, and for a two-year lease, it was 2%. In 2016, for a one-year lease, it was 0%, And for a two-year lease, it was two percent. Los, los dueños de edificios han tenido, han tenido demasiados aumentos en, y muchas ganancias. Por otra parte, y por muchos años, los dueños de edificios no han cumplido con sus obligaciones en hacer reparaciones y mantener limpios los edificios. Mis dos hijos padecen de asma, usan medicamentos y a veces no acuden a clases. Y el médico nos dijo que en Mo cucarachas y ratones que tenemos en el departamento son causantes de esta enfermedad. Um, landlords have received um, 
um, have been getting a lot, have been benefiting from these increases and have really increased their profits. And on the other hand, for many years, owners or landlords of buildings, they really haven't met their obligations to repair and maintain uh, the buildings um, clean. My two children have asthma and they use medication and sometimes they are not able to go to school and, the, and our doctor tells us that it's because of the mold, the cockroaches, and the mice that are in our apartment that are causing these illnesses. Hermo, cucarachas y ratones que son responsabilidades de higiene y que la dueña debe, debe atender, lamentablemente la ciudad hace muy poco en ayudar a niños que padecen de asma. Por mi parte, creo que no se merecen un aumento, no más aumento. Se, se merecen un 0% de aumento o renta conjugada, ya que han fallado en proporcionar una vivienda justa, han fallado abusando de los derechos humanos de la gente. Hoy pedimos ayuda, manteniendo una vivienda justa y digna para nosotros. Pedimos que se pongan en nuestros zapatos y así comprendan nuestra necesidad. Mis hijos aman esta ciudad, mis hijos juegan en esta ciudad, mis hijos quieren vivir en esta ciudad. Gracias. Mold and cockroaches and mice uh, impact cleanliness, and the and our landlord doesn't want to take care of these. And unfortunately, the city does very little to help and make sure that our children are safe and don't have asthma. I don't think that they deserve that this increase. We don't want another increase. They they deserve zero percent and a rent freeze because they don't give us adequate and just housing. They have uh, been abusing our human rights as people. And today we're asking for your help so that we want to have justice and have a, a homes with dignity for all of us. We ask that you put yourselves in our shoes and for you to understand what we need. My children love this city. My children play in this city. My children live in this city. Thank you. Thank you.